I was working on at CBC Television, uh, well, for a long time as a musician, and then eventually as band leader on a whole bunch of productions. Uh, I can't even think of the names. There was a show called Kind of Country, and uh, um, a whole bunch of shows that Beth Harrington hosted. And one day, the producer Kevin O'Connell called me into his office, and he said, "He said, look, he said, we've been trying to do uh, something that will." get the same numbers as all around the circle. I, mm -hmm. I was on circle for the last couple of years. I was a staff member on that. He said, we've been trying to get, you know, a show that will be as popular as all around the circle. And we ha we've been striking out and we don't know what's going wrong. He said, you're out there playing around with everybody. You know all of what the scene is going on in town. Give us an idea. Pitch me an idea for a show. And I didn't know what to do. So I was talking to Greg and Mary White, his, his wife, who was the manager of Cogco. Oh. And I said, you know, I, I don't know what to suggest to him. And they said, well, what would you do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to, I'd like to put a band behind Ron Hines because mm -hmm. I've been playing, working with Ron as a duo for years and I could hear people singing harmony and I don't sing. And I could hear like bass lines and drum parts in all of the songs, you know. And I thought I'd like to put a band behind Ron. And the other thing I was really interested in because of the, uh, the um, presence of, of Figgy Duff and a band called Red Island who were doing, uh, t taking the Newfoundland jigs and reels and putting the rock beats behind them. Mm -hmm. And I had been really influenced by uh, a jazz fusion outfit uh, named John McLaughlin and the Mahavishnu Orchestra, uh, who were uh, a jazz fusion band, but th their interesting thing about their instrumentation was they, they, the guitar player, John McLaughlin, would play unisons with the violin player. Oh. And when local bands were doing jigs and reels, Red Island in particular, the guitar player will play the jig along with the fiddle player. Oh, wow. But he wasn't playing them in unison, he was playing them an octave down where it's easy for a guitar player to play them. Yeah. And I thought if I could put, went up the octave and learned the fiddle tunes and played them up the octave, we'd get a Mahavishnu band, grand, uh, band sound oh. on the fiddle tunes and that would be different and would I think it would be more driving and uh, would be you know, an interesting thing to do. So those were the two musical elements I wanted. And then Greg suggested, why not myself and Mary Walsh come on as the owners of a bar, and you're the house band in the bar, and we call it the Root Cellar. And so I went into Kevin O'Connell and said, here's an idea for a show, and uh, he said, yes, but we'll do it. So we did six episodes, and, but then he didn't like it. Uh, he didn't like it because uh, Mary and Greg were very strong and mm. knew exactly what they wanted, and CBC television, especially back then, had a totally different culture. We're putting you on TV, we're telling you what to do, we're telling you what to wear, we're telling you how to behave on TV, we're telling you what to say. Wow. Whereas Mary and Greg, you know, having come up especially through the Cogco, Cogco yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. No, uh, they weren't having any of that. So they've been saying, that shot makes me look fat. I want the camera to be on this angle. And the boys in the studio, we go, what? <laughs> Who's directing this show anyway, right? Yeah, right? So after six episodes, they dropped us, but they kept the band uh, as the wonderful grand band, and we backed up artists uh, in different, again, a whole string of television mm -hmm. shows. Um, uh, again, uh, the names of the shows, there were so many of them, and they kind of change every season because mm -hmm. they were trying to come up with a combination that would click with the audience, and none of it did. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then uh, the grand band took off in 1980, so we stopped. No, I think by 1979, 1980, we had gotten to be such a, a big force live. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that again, to, to be a backtrack for a second, we would have gone on TV with the Root Cellar in '78, okay. and then after the six episodes, a few other shows, but productions that we were involved in as a band, but just musically, mm. and then the band took off as a stage unit uh, and, and bar band, and just got huge. And then mm. Jack Kellum, who had produced uh, uh, the Ryan's Fancy series for CBC Television, thought. Let's put the wonderful grand band on TV, and we'll call it instead of calling it the Root Cellar, we'll call it the WGB. And of course, Mary wasn't involved in that; it was Tommy and Greg. So we basically took the stage show and shot it in the studio. In fact, we shot some of it live. One down at the Regatta, and, and one out in the old Fort Motel, live in front of live audiences. And then the rest of it was done in CBC studios, but pre-recorded. And they would bring an audience in, and, and you know, shoot the audience, give the audience reaction, and stuff like that. And that took off like wildfire and we toured continuously and toured around the island and places that you know uh, Burgio was incredible they'd never seen a band like that and they were, there we were on TV every week we were we were we had the biggest audience ever recorded mm. for our uh, television show it was on Monday nights at 7 or 7 30 and uh, it ended up like being 85 or 90 percent of every television set in Newfoundland was tuned into the wonderful grand band show more than we're watching the news Right? Yeah. More than any of it was record breaking. They were measuring the numbers in Toronto and they couldn't believe it. We would sell out advertising in the in the hour before the show came on and the hour after the show came on. You couldn't get near our show at all for Dubai and I. It was, yeah. It was nuts. So we played play in places like Burgio and like I mean we checked into the motel and all the kids in the community came up and stood in front of the motel 
and we went off across the street to the to the diner and they all followed us across the street to the diner and they stand around the booth while we're eating and you know it was unbelievable <laughs> crazy, yeah. it was crazy